And welcome back to coverage of Grand Prix Louisville. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth here with Jacob Van Lunen. John Stern on the left. He's playing against Jesse Hefner on the right-hand side of your screen. John Stern playing red-green beats. Now, this is not to be confused with the, uh, the, the red-green devotion deck that we've seen time and time again in the feature match area here throughout the course of the weekend. This is just a good old-fashioned beatdown deck with here a turn two Domri raid. This is similar... Uh, in, in, in similar vein to the deck that Brian Kibler played at the World Championship. On the other side of the table, Jesse Hefner is playing another deck that we've also seen more and more of as the day's gone on here. Hero's Downfall, by the way, is taking, taking down Domri Raid here. Uh, Mono Black Devotion, and this is a true devotion deck. Very much so. And uh, John Stern really needs a very aggressive draw to overwhelm the black player before he's able to start doing things like uh, casting Grey Merchants or making Pack Rat Tokens, things like that in the later portions of the game. And Xenoghost is going to be a great start here because uh, his opponent, Jesse, is going to be forced to use a Hero's Downfall main phase to deal with that Xenoghost, and he's just going to continue taking damage from that Seder token. Well, and interestingly here, though, it's not just that he's forced to use it, he's also forced to have it. He, we know that he does, but, you know, Planeswalker into Planeswalker with no actual board state here for Jesse means that it really puts the screws to him to say you must have Hero's Downfall or start using your turns to activate Mutavault and get in there. And uh, either way, John Stern you know, would be in the lead. And he's got a Storm Breath Dragon, so we see a very strong curve out here of Planeswalker, Planeswalker, Dragon, and all a turn sooner thanks to that Elvish Mystic. Really showing the power of acceleration. And here's a Desecration Demon for Jesse. And that's huge. Uh, Desecration Demon is one of the very best cards in a matchup like this. All of a sudden, Storm Breath Dragon has to kind of pump the brakes here for a bit. <coughs> John Stern, you got to figure that six toughness on Desecration Demon is a huge hurdle for John's deck. It's not like he can just fire off a, you know, a Mizium Mortars or something like that and take down that that demon. Yeah, he would need to have two copies of Mizium Mortars as his opponent had two copies of Hero's Downfall. Yep, here's uh, Sylvan Carry added for John Stern. He's going to use it to tap down the, dr the demon and that's going to allow him to get in for seven points of damage here. So we know his plan. Beatdowns, beatdowns, and more beatdowns. Here's a scavenging news and now all of a sudden he finds himself in a position where he can sacrifice the Elvish Mystic to tap down the demon get in there for a bunch more damage, potentially lethal damage here if, uh, if Jesse can't find some way to, uh, to come up with, to, to gain some life or to neutralize the dragon or another threat here. Yeah, and I mean, Jesse's really going to need a spot removal spell because if John has another land, he can use that Elvish Mystic uh, in conjunction with six lands to monstrous his Storm Breath Dragon, dealing a massive blow to Jesse's life total, and then he can just sacrifice the tap to Elvish Mystic to tap down the demon and just rumble right into the red zone for lethal. Okay, so huge pressure here. Now, there is a Muta Vault there for, for Jesse. One of the bonuses to being a monocolor deck is that you get to run Muta Vault. In fact, it's... For some people, it's the reason to play mono, though I think Devotion has probably taken that title away. But still, having access to Mutavault is a huge, huge upside for these mono-colored decks. Definitely. And uh, this is something that's great about playing the red-green strategies in a format where mono-black is becoming very popular. So the mono-black deck has a lot of trouble uh, making like a board state that where it can you know, survive the early turns against these aggressive strategies. Yeah, you talked about that earlier, that the Mono Black also plays a sig significant number of spells that does damage to itself. If you're assertive and you can apply a lot of pressure to it, it has a hard time recovering. This is where cards like Thoughtseize and Underworld Connections just look awful. So here I imagine we're going to see a... Uh A land plus a monstrous storm breath dragon. There's the land. 
Now, the John Stern can't really be considered about cards like Doomblade or another Hero's Downfall, can he? I mean, I mean, you can't really play around them that much. Yeah. You, you might want not want to send your whole team in so that you don't get you know blown out by like a pack rat activation plus a um, Mutavolt. Uh, you can't really do both here. All right, so d I think he sacrificed the Seder there. Yes. Jesse's got two cards in his hand. So well, he can activate the Mutavolt and make a pack rat token. He can just activate his Mutavolt. He just and can't his block with both. Yeah, but his pack rats will be three threes because mm -hmm. he activated that, and then he can block the two ground guys that will be remaining. So he he really just wants to get the dragon in there. Once he gets the dragon in there, and goes for monstrous. He's yeah, it, he's going to be winning this game. I think it seems very unlikely that uh, Jesse would pass the turn. So he's going to attack first, and that's going to force Jesse to do something. He does nothing. He goes down to one, and John still doesn't really have any reason to, to fire off that Storm Breath Dragon here because if it gets killed after Monstrous, then it won't actually do the damage, right? Correct. I mean, he could just go for it here. He yes. is allowing his opponent a draw step. But if his opponent really does anything of consequence, he can just respond by activating his Storm Breath Dragon's monstrosity ability and finishing off his opponent. Exactly. Jesse doing a little math here. Going to tap some mana, but if he, if he taps too many... Basically, if he leaves himself with only one mana up, then John can just confidently fire it off. Here's a whip of Erebos. So this is ultimately going to end up forcing John Stern's hand here, right? He's going to have to just fire off the dragon and hope that it hits. Yeah, and I, I think it will hit. I, I think it will, too. Yeah. It, it definitely feels like it's going to hit. But I, th I think, you know, this is a pretty careful dance for for John to play. Okay. So John said, okay, let's go to combat. Sacrificed his, uh, his ooze. Still didn't fire off the dragon because now he's got a lethal dragon that he can just attack with and just force the doom blade right here. Yeah, now, so now he knows that he's winning because he can attack with the dragon even if his opponent does have the removal spell for two mana, then he can just monstrous it in response and kill his opponent. That's right. So there it is, John Stern playing the patient game. You know, he probably would have won had he just, you know, monstrosity on yeah, the dragon. Yeah, he definitely would have won. But yeah. there was a way he couldn't, he could lose if he did that. Yeah, and, and he this instead way played, he, he played in around. such a way that he could not. Yeah, so great stuff there from John Stern. He's from Canada, you can see. And uh, he's playing against Jesse uh, Hefner. Hefner. Jesse Hefner, an American player, playing Mono Black Devotion. Splashing blue off of Watery Grave and Temple of Deceit for the uh, away half of Far Away, or the far half the far. of Far Away, and Ashiok, Nightmare Weaver. One. Well, three more on the sideboard. Mm -hmm. Ashiak has proven itself to be a very powerful Planeswalker in these mid-range and controlling matchups. Interestingly enough, though, um, on the play, Jesse seems to have a very strong matchup here. On the draw, it, it doesn't seem like that's the case at all. Okay. Uh, John Stern does not have the Burning Tree Emissary draws that are available to some of the other green decks. He's just not even so running Burning Tree Emissary, right? No, no Burning Tree Emissaries in his list. I like this take on the on the format, though, right? It's just assertive, it's consistent, it's not cute, it doesn't... Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of haste damage. He has mm -hmm. four Star Wrath Dragon, two Xena Ghost, and two Mist Cutter Hydra in his main deck. Also and that's going to be that's gonna set himself up in Boon Seder, which is essentially haste damage yeah, in feels most scenarios. Like it. Yeah. So... He's going to be set up reasonably well against these control strategies that seem to be the big deck at this tournament. Uh -huh. So I, I really like John's choice this weekend. Also, I, I don't know how many people are running a deck like this, but his is the only one I've seen on camera or when I've been out wandering around just checking out matches on the floor. Not, it certainly hasn't been a popular choice here this weekend, and uh, 
I wonder if there's a... I wonder if this is the aggressive deck. You know, because we have seen a couple of, uh, of aggressive decks have some success in the tournament. We've seen Mono White go undefeated. L picked up yep. his first loss. I don't know. 9 0 on since. day one. Mm -hmm. Mono White. Pretty incredible there. And Mono White, again, it's a deck that's pretty well positioned against Esper. You know, you, you cast some early creatures, you apply some early pressure, and then your Mutafaults just start to do incredible work. And, you know, they cast Supreme Verdict, you cast another guy and attack them with a Muta Vault. They cast, you know, a removal spell, you attack them with a Muta Vault and cast another guy. And you, if you just keep applying pressure with those Muta Vaults, you can really just whittle away at the Esper player's life total before they have an opportunity to swing Revelation out of the situation they're in. That's right. And, and you mentioned it when we were watching that match, uh, the presence of Boros Charm in that deck as well as a finisher and as a way to uh, play around cards like Divine Verdict. So... Yeah, interesting stuff here from, from the aggressive side. You know, for the most part, the early format here at the Pro Tour and uh, a lot, you know, the majority of decks that we've seen here have been either mid-range or control decks. Not that many uh, aggressive decks, which is kind of interesting because we're still fairly early in Theros Standard after, you know, Innistrad's rotated out and, and we're, we're taking a look now at, at decks that are really with a fresh take on the format. Yeah, lot, usually early on in the it. format, you'll mm -hmm. see a lot of aggressive decks. And I mean, we saw that the, you know, the first open series event that happened with this new format, uh, a mono red deck yep. took it home. It was victorious in the end. But when push comes to shove, uh, right now, there are a lot of really powerful magic cards in the three to five mana range, mm. or the three to six mana range, rather. And it, players are going to be really attracted to those cards and want to play with the most powerful spells. And unless Mono Black becomes just this boogeyman in the format, then I, I don't think we're going to see a in huge influx of aggressive strategies. Okay. Well, let's see if it can work for John Stern. Both of these players are 9 and 2. So not particularly comfortable here in the third round of, uh, of day 2 of the GPO, but, but still in contention. Definitely in contention. However, not where they really want to be. Right. All right. So no turn one play for for John Stern there, but a turn two pack rat is an interesting one here for Jesse. Card can you know, absolutely take over the game if left unchecked. Yeah, a pack rat on the play against a deck like Gruel Devotion can just take a game over. Mm -hmm. One thing I notice about about John's list is that, you know, he doesn't really have removal. He's got a few Mizium Mortars in the main, but it's not a burn deck. It's not like he's playing, you know, lightning strikes and things like that. All right, here's a he Life Bane a lot Zombie. Of reach. Wow. Life Bane Zombie really should good. be able to do some work here. We see Boon Seder that he can take, or an Elvish Mystic. There's also three lands and a Xenagos. So is he just going to nab the Boon Seder here? I would assume so. The I mean, the Elvish Mystic card. is not nearly as powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Xenagos is actually very weak, too, because Lifebane Zombie is one of the best cards to have matched up against Xenagos the Reveler. Ah, uh, because it just kills him. Yeah, uh, normally Xenagos is powerful because he can protect himself with the Satyrs if he needs to, uh -huh. but against a card with Intimidate, like Lifebane Zombie, that happens to be black and have three power, it can just crack away at that Xenagos, and John's going to need to come up with some sort of creative play if he wants to keep his Xenagos on the battlefield. It's looking like this game is going very well for Jesse at this point. Ye old pack rat into <laughs> Lifebane Zombie. <laughs> Haven't seen that one before, but... Uh Seems pretty sweet here. All right, so John's going to play a tap stomping ground. Oh, he's drawn a Colonian Tusker, and he, so he gets to play a Tusker and an Elvish Mystic. He doesn't want to run Xenagos out because, yeah, like we mentioned, it just eats an attack or two from the Lifebane Zombie, and that's just not really going to get it done here. It's just not enough. So let's take a look at what is this going to be a desecration demon? Yeah, Ooh, and this is sure just nightmarish for John Stern. What I, a savage Lightbane curve. Zombie, one of the absolute best cards against him. Pack Rat, one of the absolute best cards against him. And Desecration Demon, one of the absolute best cards against him. Yeah. If you're playing a red green deck, yeah. a six six flyer is not something you're very well equipped to deal with. No, I mean, does does John have access to like plummet or something out of the board? He does. Okay. He has a pair of plummets, which are definitely coming into the mono black matchup. 
He's also got Arbor Colossus in the sideboard as well. So he does have ways to deal, but th he must have those because that Desecration Demon makes short work of your life total while you're fumbling around trying to find an answer to it. There's no doubt about that. Here's Xenagos. Is he going to plus Xenagos? He does. So Xenagos gets to live. One, two, three, four. And, ooh, Pelucranos here. So a couple of nice draws there for John Stern. He found a Colonian Tusker into a Pelucranos, and that could change things around here. Yeah, I mean, that makes a pretty big difference here. I, he can uh, sacrifice his Elvish Mystic to keep that Desecration Demon tapped down. Then he can use the Monstrous Ability on his Pelucranos to take out the Life Pain Zombie. And uh, in doing so, he's actually going to give himself a pretty big opportunity to crack in for a lot of damage right past that Pack Rat. Of note here as well, the Pack Rat's a 1-1 one -one currently. Definitely worth noting, but uh, it can very easily become a 2-2 two -two at yeah, will. It just depends on what Jesse wants to do during his turn. You know, if he taps out here. I think that uh, Lifebane Zombie actually just attacked John. Oh, interesting. Now, now John can be a little more... Uh... Oh. Okay, that's that, why. that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Wow, and a Doomblade for Pelucranos. What a huge turn for Jesse. Hero's yeah. Downfall to kill Xenagos, followed up by Doomblade on Pelucranos, and it's left John Stern with just a vanilla 3-3 and a Sylvan carry added. He's able to just bash in there, play his land, and just say go. So Jesse really has taken control of this game here. He had a fantastic start yeah, in that last turn as a follow-up. Yeah, point. just put him right in the lead here. Another Desecration Demon because, hey, one's not enough. So I think we're going to see a John Stern concession here pretty soon and probably going to get a game three under the lights here from these two players, both sitting at X and two. All right, what do we got? Dragon? Okay, make a dragon. Not really enough here. No. Can't even block the demon demons profitably here. Also dies to essentially all the removal that Jesse runs if he happens to have any more. He's drawn a Grey Merchant, but he's got an ultimate price, and that's going to do it. John Stern goes to put his, uh, his dragon in the graveyard, and along with it, all of his permanence as he yes. concedes the game. So we're going to get scoops a game three here. Up. Yeah, scoops him up, and... Uh, Interesting. You know, you mentioned it, Jake, that uh, being on the play versus on the draw, really, really critical in this matchup. Oh, yeah, it's huge. Winning a die roll against the Mono Black Devotion deck is pretty, pretty important, especially when you're a mid-range aggressive deck. You know, if you're an aggro red deck where you're playing 8 to 12 one-drops, mm -hmm. then you can run them over even on the draw. But if you're like this green-red almost aggro deck, mm -hmm. you really need to be on the play mm. because you want to, you know, get those Storm Breath Dragons cracking your opponent in the face before they start chaining Grey Merchant of Asphodels. You want to have your Pelucranos in play and be forcing your opponent to use removal spells as opposed to playing things like Life Bane Zombie that are just going to get them really far ahead. Mm -hmm. And with all the mana ramp on the play, it's very easy to get your big creatures, your most important green guys, out of your hand before your opponent has the opportunity to Life Bane Zombie you. Okay. So it was kind of cool. In game one, we, we really got to see John Stern do exactly what he wanted. He had a turn one elf, and he ran that into turn two planeswalker, turn three planeswalker, turn four dragon. Yeah, and I mean, it and was just great. just apply huge pressure. Now, Jesse had the perfect iteration of cards to deal with it, too, and was on the play. But... But still lost. But still lost. But in game two, Jesse was able to do exactly what he wanted to do with yep. turn two pack rat, turn three life bane zombie, turn four desecration demon, and then turn five was just nasty as it he as he used both Heroes Downfall and Doomblade to just basically take every important permanent off of John Stern's side. So we've really got a chance to see what both decks are trying to do here, and I'm curious to see what happens in this third game, which one of these decks is going to be able to enact that plan better. 
Yeah, I think John's got to be happy being on the play for game three. Uh, in game one, the reason he was able to break serve was because of the power of, that was given to him by Elvish Mystic. Mm -hmm. Elvish Mystic puts you a turn ahead on mana, and it kind of steals the play from an opponent who doesn't have access that's to that same type of ramp. Uh, our producer, Rashad Miller, could tell you just how powerful it is to be playing a one-mana spell that gives you essentially an extra land for the first few turns of the game. I can't. It's just about <laughs> his favorite thing to do in the world. <laughs> Alright, so uh, John Stern, the Grand Prix Atlantic City mm -hmm. champion. Uh, also a standard. Also a standard event there. He played Hexproof. It was a very interesting metagame choice. He came into that event. I don't think people really saw it coming, and uh, it ended up being able to take that title home for him. Let's see if, uh, you know, now he's got his back against the wall. He's 9-2 here, playing a deck that's not really on anybody, everybody's radar for this weekend. And uh, he now has the play against a matchup which he can't be thrilled with in post-boarded games. Well, he better get used to it because if he wins this match and gets to keep playing, this will not be the last time he sees Mono Black, most likely. All right, so ideal turn one here for John Stern. Elvish Mystic and a tap land here. Going to scry. Oh, I like that. He turned it sideways to show that he hasn't decided yet. All right, goes on the bottom. Let's see what John comes up with. Does he have Domri Raid? Domri Raid would be an excellent card to have in this spot. I don't think he has it, though. It looks like he's going to play a forest. Nothing? Just passes the turn back? How does that happen? Oh, well, he's got a Boon Seder. Oh, he's got a Boon Seder for end step? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no way that he would not attack with the Elvish Mystic. Exactly. All right, so Boon Seder on end step. Flashes it in. He's already got five power on the board as he hits and enters his third turn. Of course, there's a ton of removal that can kill that Boon Seder, but he's just going to have to grind out the mono black deck here. What do we got here? A Sylvan carry added. Attack. Still has his land drop to hit two. All right, four damage. So it did. So it did not get doom bladed. And there's a scavenging news as well. All right, so solid start here for John Stern, and no two mana removal spell for Jesse. So this could get out of hand pretty quickly for him if he's going to try to cast one spell a turn for the rest of the game, starting off this far behind. Yeah, and I mean, it, next turn he's going to be forced to use a Hero's Downfall on that Boon Seder, but that's going to give John the opportunity to make a Scavenging Ooze into a 4-4, four, four, and he's still going to be, or into a 3-3, three, three, and he's still going to be crashing into the red zone for 4 damage. And plus we could just see a dragon, right? And there it is. And that is a dragon. That is a dragon in the words of Jacob Van Lunen. All right, that was a dragon. It but was still, dragon. it represents 6 damage here, and uh, Jesse falls down to 10, his life total falling quickly. And again, he just doesn't really have enough cheap spells to get himself out of this currently, but what does he have here? This is where Desecration Demon, you'd think it would be really sweet, but it's not. And there it is. Unfortunately, it's just going to eat one of these random creatures and still allow five or six damage to get in. I believe another Boon Seder off the top here. So he can pre-combat Boon Seder up something, sack Delvish Mystic, and get in there for, what, ten damage? Yeah, I mean, that would That's be absolutely lethal. huge. One, two. No, he doesn't have that play. All right, so plummet to just kill. Seems very, very reasonable. So it must have been a Elvish Mystic or something instead of the boost. Yeah, I mean, he can attack for nine here, just natural. With the onboard attack, putting uh, Jesse down to one life, which would be a huge deal because Jesse's deck has, you know, Thoughtseize, Underworld Connections. It's going to... Putting yeah. him at one definitely yeah, blanks a limits his options. Steps. Yeah. Also, I mean, uh, Jesse does not have a fifth land in hand. He needs to draw one, and he does play four Watery Grave. Or it looks so like he did have a land, but it was a Watery Grave, but I think he drew the Swamp anyway. Okay. I think he has a Far and Away in his hand as well. But being at one... <laughs> we sh we're showing him at zero life right now, but <laughs> he's at one. We assure you, he's at one. Yeah, and uh, but the problem is, I mean, even the Elvish Mystic is lethal at this point. Not the place you want to be against a deck that has the ability to flood the board the way a green-red deck does in this standard format. He needs to kill three creatures this turn. 
Is there even a sequence that does that? I guess you could have two Doom Blades activate Muta Vault block Doom Blade Doom Blade or something. Yeah. So there's a few things, but it's getting very narrow, and we, we have to remember that if he had a Doom Blade, it would have hit that Boon Seder earlier, so the chances that he has two are almost... It's almost impossible, so... Things looking very good for John Stern to, to improve to 10-2 uh, and two here in Louisville. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the plan is here for Jesse. Yeah, he's just trying to run through everything in his head to make sure that he's not missing something. He does have a far away in hand, so he can... Uh, probably his play would just be to bounce the scavenging ooze and uh, make his opponent sacrifice a creature, but then he's just dead to an attack, so... Yeah. Yeah, and a little bit of an interesting play here. If Jesse had access to a little more mana, he might be able to get this, but he does not. I think he's dead. I think you're right. Jesse going to do a little math. Nope, he can't do it. it. And John Stern, he says, yeah, I can do this, and I've got that, and I can do one of those, but none of it's enough. And that's going to do it. So John Stern improves to 10-2, and two, still alive for top eight. And that's how you beat the Mono Black Devotion deck. You run it over. You just run it over. You run